In this video, I'm going to go through an example of uh, non-dimensionalization, and if I go through that quickly enough, I will also include the phase plane for the system of equations um, referred to as the Lutkov-Volterra predator-prey system. So that system is what we're looking at here, which is n prime equal a n minus b p n, and you can see from this equation that if the other species p is at a zero population size, we have straight up growth. So that would be the prey population. And if n is equal to zero, you can see that p prime is equal to c n times p minus d p. So when n is equal to zero, the p population just dies out. So it's dependent on n for its survival. That's the predator population. Now I've included just for completeness here an initial condition, but I'm actually not going to really think too much about that initial condition. I'm going to look at the scales for the problem that come from the coefficients a, b, c, and d, and use those to consider how I'm going to non-dimensionalize the system of equations. Uh, okay, so let's start off by writing down just the units on all of these. Now keep in mind that n and p have distinct units. I'm going to denote the units of n with uh, square brackets n, and the units of p with square brackets p, and um, because prey and predators do not just simply interchange like infected people and susceptible people, we are going to maintain distinct scales for those. So going through these, A will have to have units of 1 over time because the derivative on the left hand side has units of population of prey divided by time and on the right hand side we're taking a term and adding it to another term. Both of those have to have the same units as the units of the, of the expression on the left hand side. And so n has units of population of prey and so a has to have units of 1 over time. b has to get rid of the population size of p units so it has to have units with p in the denominator and then it also has to pick up some time units so that the two terms have the same overall unit or the three terms have the same overall units. And then c has units of 1 over population of prey so, uh, units and then multiplied by time in the denominator as well and D has units of 1 over time. So we have two pure time constants here 1 over A and 1 over D and so those are the ones that make the most sense to scale time by and so uh, I'm just going to choose A because that's the birth term and that seems somehow more optimistic. Okay so that's our way of redefining time. So we're going to define a new time variable tau which scales t and the product of a with t has no units so that's an okay non-dimensionalization of time. Now n, n has um, units of n obviously and the only thing in this whole collection of um, constants a, b, c, d that has n involved is c. You can see down here in the denominator, we have units of n. So um, I'm going to want that c to be in the denominator. And when it's in the denominator, I end up with time in the numerator. So I'm going to get rid of that by having a time unit, one over time unit quantity in the numerator. I could either do a or d. And I'm going to choose a. If you're curious to know if it makes a difference, I would encourage you to say d instead there and see how your equation differs. Uh, basically, you'll end up with a non-dimensional parameter in a different place than I do in the end. And so I'm just going to use x as the non-dimensional version of n. And then for p, I'm going to do so something similar. I'm going to have a divided by b, and now you can see that gives us units of p in the numerator, and the times cancel. And I'll rescale that variable, call it y. Now keep in mind that n is a function of t, x is a function of tau, p is a function of t, and y is a function of tau. So when I equate them like this, I really have to think in terms of t's being plugged into these guys, let's say. And here you want to always plug a tau into x. So if I have to write it as an expression in terms of t, I would write at in there. So that's how we translate from n to y, n to x and p to y. Okay, so, uh, so now remember that when we take a derivative, now this is a, a sort of cheating way, really you should think through the chain rule on this, but just the shortcut way of thinking about ddt is you can replace 
the t by tau over a. And when I do that, the a comes out in the numerator and I'm left with dd tau. So any derivative with respect to time can be replaced by a times a derivative with respect to tau. So uh, the going up to the n prime equation up here, let's rewrite that in terms of tau x and y. So first I'm going to write it as x dot, where the dot represents derivative with respect to tau. And that means that I have to put an a in front for the time change. But then I also have gone from n to x, which means I have to have another a and a c in the denominator. All right, and then on the other side, I have a times a over c times x. So that's replacing n. And then minus b times, you now p is a over b times y. And x is a over c times x. Sorry, n is a over c times x. So now there's a bunch of cancellation I can do. You'll notice I have an a and an a, an a and an a, an a and an a in every term. So I can cancel all the a's out by dividing through by an a squared. And a b here cancels with a b here. And I have a 1 over c, 1 over c, 1 over c and all. And so what I end up with for this equation is actually just x dot is equal to x minus y times x. Similarly, for p, we get a over b times a y dot. And that's the a over b comes from rescaling p to y. And the a alone came from rescaling time. And then c times n p, I get from the n, I get an a over c times x, and then from the p, I get an a over b, an a. and that's going to be multiplied by y, and then I subtract d times a over b times y. And now you see here we have an a and an a, an a and an a, and an a, and now I have to put in an a in the denominator because I only have one to cancel. And then what else do we have? Let's see, we have a C and a C canceling. And then we have a B in this term, a B in this term, and a B in this term. So now we can rewrite our system of equations as x dot is equal to x minus y times x, and y dot is equal to x times y minus, and I'm going to call this delta times y, where delta is equal to d over a. So I've used this rescaling of, oops, not that. I've used this rescaling of time n and p to simplify my system and rem remove three out of the four parameters that were in the original equation. Okay, so now that we're here, let's draw a phase plane for this. So um, I'm going to move this guy away. Maybe I'll put it down here. And up here, I'm going to factor these so it's a little bit easier to see what I'm working with. And so when I draw the phase plane down here, actually, I'm going to draw it skewed because we're really mostly interested in the first quadrant. So we have x on this axis and y on this axis. So I'm going to put a big green dot over here to indicate the x equation and a yellow or an orange dot over here for the y equation. And now let's see where do the null lines end up. So the x dot equation is equal to zero when x is equal to zero. So when x is equal to zero, that's right along here. And the other place where x is equal to zero is where y is equal to one. So that's at 1. And then the y equation is equal to 0 when y is equal to 0. So y dot is equal to 0 along that line. And along the line x equal delta. OK, so already we can see we have a steady state here. 
and a steady state here. I'm leaving them empty for now until I figure out if those are stable or unstable steady states. And so let's draw in some vectors before we do any more. So let's see if x is less than delta and y is less than 1, but both positive. So I'm in this box here. What do I have above? So x dot is going to be x is positive and y is less than 1, so this is positive. So x dot is going to be positive everywhere in that box. Now that vector will be different in different parts of the box, different size, but always pointing to the right. And then what about the um, what about the y equation? So y is positive, but x is less than delta, so that is a negative, so y dot is negative in that box. So let's move this guy up and represent that with a little direction vector indicator here. Okay, so now um, because the green lines are x dot equals zero, things have to cross, solutions have to cross vertically across a green or vertically along here, which means that that's an invariant line. And so what you can see is these guys should point downward. So when x is equal to zero, y dies out like minus delta y. And so we get exponential decaying into the origin. And when y is equal to zero, we have x changing, and x just grows like x dot equal x. So that means we have exponential growth over here. And so we can see that we're going to be coming down and right in this part of the phase plane. And that's what these arrows indicated. And then once we cross, so we have to cross this one horizontally, that's a y null line. And you can see that the y component is positive here. It's going to stay positive as it crosses, and it'll remain positive on this side. What changes across the orange line is the y dot, which goes from negative to zero to positive. And I'm going to move that down so I have a little bit more space. And then up here, these arrows have to be pointing up. And in this region, I'll have switched the x dot, but not the y dot direction. And then finally, that means we cross this way. And in this area region here, we're going to have still moving to the left. But now the y dot is going to go from positive to 0 to negative as we cross. And then finally, we can fill in these arrows have to be downward. So you can see that there's some kind of a circulation going on. We're rotating around in the plane. And it's not exactly clear what will happen close to this point here, so it's hard to tell what its classification is. But this one here, it seems pretty clear that if we're going down but without quite zero x's, we'll eventually move out in this direction. And so if we were to fill in on all sides, we'd be able to figure out that this origin is a saddle. So let me fill that in as a white core so we know that that is an unstable steady state at the origin. And this one will turn out to be neutrally stable, but we don't know that yet, and that requires a nonlinear calculation. So this is as good as I can do for my phase plane until I do a more careful calculation of what's going on here. Okay, so that is the phase plane and non-dimensionalization for the predator-prey model.